What's going on, people? And welcome to a brand new episode of Too Many Games and Not Enough Time, where I get the pleasure to talk to some incredible gamers from around the globe. Now, we are on your podcast services as well, fam. So, gas, you can listen to us on Spotify, Apples, all of them things. If you're listening over there, make sure you come and join us on the YouTube and give us a thumbs up. Today's episode of Too Many Games, I am feeling extra special because I've got two members from one of my favorite podcasts. We're yep. talking the Burnout Brighter podcast. Now let's see if you can guess who's who. One of them <laughs> is a huge Final Fantasy fan. Got a sick comic book strip artist called Pudding and Flam. She is the liquor store diva. Ain't afraid of that. Drank, drank and loves some strange ass games. Now the other one is a Persona 5 nut. Persona full stop. I definitely know he's got at least six pictures of Chie hiding somewhere in his yard. An amazing host and an all-round dope personality. And they are both ambassadors for diversity. Matt and Destiny, welcome to Too Many Games. Woo! Thank you for having us on. It's good to be here. Thanks so much, man. We're super stoked. How are you doing today? Good, we're doing good. Tomorrow's my birthday, so came over to have some drinks and some food and to do the podcast. Yeah, Yo, feeling good. Lisa, to go. your birthday. Happy hey. birthday, Lisa. Happy birthday in advance. Now, I got the pleasure to come on your podcast and I love talking to both of you. You both got really great opinions about video games. So I thought it'd be nothing better to then have you on my podcast. But where are you located? You're located in Korea, right? Yeah, yeah. We're currently in Busan, South Korea. So explain that to me before we even start talking about games. What are you lot doing in Korea? Because neither of you look Korean to me. Like, I might really? need my glasses and thing there. <laughs> Destiny, <laughs> Destiny more than Matt might be able to pass it off. Just might be able to pass it off. That black and these thing. You know what I mean? But yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I actually came over here about five years ago to teach. Um, met my wife, came back to Canada. Ended up coming back here because we missed it so much and spent some time with her family. Uh, and I met Destiny at our workplace where we both teach. We teach like kindergartners, middle school students, the whole thing we teach them a bunch of english and uh we started vibing and we kind of looked at each other and we're like hey you want to start a podcast it's like yeah okay why not that's not how it went <laughs> <laughs> so matt has always wanted to do a podcast and he said he just felt like he was missing something and um when i came back from vacation he was like oh i got to talk to you about something really important so like him and senna took me out to dinner and he like explained the whole podcast to me and then he was like would you be down to like be one of the hosts and i was like yeah and he was like yeah okay we're gonna start here and da, 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 da. and so we've been doing it for like over a year and it's been going great yeah korea brought us together i love your podcast and i love your dynamics so super Thank dope to you. talk to about you so too many games we get to speak about video games now the premise of too many games is Obviously, the world is in a crisis and the pandemic. So many people are in isolation. Other people are in quarantine. So people got a little bit more time to play some games. Now, Destiny, I'm going to start with you because you play some strange ass games. Like the last <laughs> time I was on your podcast, the game you told me about was I was scared to Google it just in case my VPN was going to come up on some search or Saturn. So did you Google you... it though? Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. So, right, I've got... <laughs> so right, I've got Express VPN. That's, 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 and that's not a sponsor. They're not paying me yet. Um, yeah. So yeah. what, what have you been playing? Um, I've been checking it. Well, you know, I've been kind of going into the whole RPG maker games because I, really love retro looking games like pixel art and that's kind of what i came up on uh, so lately i've been playing a game called witch's heart which is really long and kind of repetitive and but it's good because there's like so many different endings so basically it starts off with like this house and you have these characters that are in this house and they get trapped and they're all looking for the witch's heart and the witch's heart is actually in the protagonist so Jesus it's kind of like who's going to kill her to get it out. So it's like, is there a wish that you're willing to kill for? 
and she keeps dying and you keep having to go back because then you find out one of the characters is actually trying to save her Damn. each time. And um, they did a little break, like they released it in like pieces. And so like when you get back to it, evidently like she's been killed 999 times. So it's it's crazy. I know it's weird. You know, I'm into that weird stuff. So, so do you know what? what I just thought playing. would be an amazing drinking game. What? Every time you listen to your podcast, if Destiny mentions a game you've never heard of before, oh you have God. to take a shot. Like that, like I'm literally going to do that. That is going to be my new <laughs> drinking game. I'm going to take a shot every time I listen to the pod. And You're you going to be lit. Yeah, and you mentioned something that I've never heard of. Yeah, I'm going to be on the floor because that, but that sounds sick. I, I love, how do you even discover these type of games? Like, because you've got such a varied um, thought process and, and, and like mindset of the type of games you play. How do you even find these strange Most strange of the ones? games that I pick, it's due to the art style. And then I'll do a little research on it and then I'll actually play the game. And a lot of it comes from watching other people play different games and then they'll be like, oh, you might be interested in this. And so then I'll like, if I like the art style, I'll play the game. If I don't like the art style, I won't play the game. So, and they just end up being, I think RPG maker games are just kind of different in general. Like they try to stay away from mainstream stories. So I think most of the RPG maker games that you find out there are gonna be a little, a little crazy and i like indie games so i love it it is crazy so matt as yeah. a gamer right we're always moaning about these backlogs we're like there's too much games we ain't got enough time to play oh them God, we're man. gonna go back and play this game we're gonna go back and play that game then we moan about a game that's been delayed even though we haven't played everything that's on our backlog what game or games from your backlog would you really want to now you got a little bit more time would you really want to sink your teeth into like something that you haven't played before that's always been there on the side but you're like you know what i'm gonna give some time to really feel out like this game the one that immediately comes to mind is judgment uh i'm a huge yakuza fan and judgment is like their uh one of their spin-off side story games where you play like a detective and I picked it up and I started it and I got like a couple hours in. And I'm like, I'm loving this. This is so much fun. And then true as a, like, as always, the, the, the real problem with us gamers is that something new comes out and I'm like, ooh, look at that shiny. I'm going to go click on that one. Uh, and like, I loved my time with it. And even though it was just a couple hours, like I'm itching to get back to it. Um, but there's just always something new. And that's the one that hurts me the most. Like, I just, I just want to finish that game. So you're basically saying gamers are magpies. Mm. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> really, yeah. <laughs> Find the new shiny thing and fly over there. So judgment for me, because like I said on your pod, I that I not really, I don't play much games that are, that are in sub. So nine times out of time, 10, the games I play are like in either English or English dub. So um, I actually spent quite a, a long time in judgment. And one thing I really like about Judgment, which is what I'm kind of excited about trying out Yakuza um, Zero, is the world is so alive in a way that um, it is in like a GTA and stuff. Because it's such a small hub, like you really kind of get lost in everything that's going on. Because um, I just went to an arcade fam and I was like spending bare time in an arcade. I'm like... I forgot that I was meant to go and rescue someone. Go and go, like this time I'm meant to go and look at some evidence, bring in the forensic. This time I'm playing Outrun, my G. Yeah, they pack a lot into their games. And the thing that I really, really love about uh, the Yakuza series and Judgment and Extension is that like, because they're set over different times, you actually see the world change through the years. Like the first Yakuza happens in like the 80s, I think. And then like, it goes all the way up until modern day. So you actually see Kamurocho like change and evolve and you'll be like, oh, this street corner had this restaurant here before, but now it's a fucking burger place. Oh, Dang that's it. that's cool. Um, yeah, um, well, that's, it, it changes that's, a lot. That's also what I like about Judgment because sometimes it is a bit daunting to go into a series like halfway through or like some series, Yakuza has been really good because they're very good about putting it on 
on modern day consoles but sometimes it's really difficult to to get back so like that like destiny we both love final fantasy and some mm. people be like might be like oh my god seven i haven't played one two three four five <laughs> and six yet and be like no they, they haven't got nothing to do with each other it's, yeah it's good. <laughs> and i kind of i kind of felt that like about that yakuza feeling a bit um thrown off like oh can i jump in on like episode six um so that's what i liked about judgment kind of having a clean state like within that world but having a new character and me being able to connect to that new character but still kind of um kind of had that modern day graphics and and look yeah. and 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 it's got some really good um fighting mechanics you know the fighting mechanics always remind me of do you remember in the old school tekkens when they used to have the stages where you used to run and just fight people so yeah that's yeah. that yeah so it's almost like they've taken that and made it into a proper game yeah, they do a lot with it. And the cool thing about Judgment is that like you still get to live in that world. And like it's it's just such a cool place. And like we talked about when you came on the show, just having a world to kind of sink your teeth into and get lost in is so important. So like I'm glad they did Judgment because like you said, even for me getting into Yakuza, super daunting because of how many of them there are. And Judgment's a great way to kind of like if if you like Judgment, then you're going to like the rest of them. All right, so I've got a question for both of you. Um Destiny, I'm going to start with you. I don't know if I should be scared asking you this question <laughs> or not, okay. but um, so many games out there, so many play. I'm a gamer. I love video games. This is my life. I want you both to recommend a game for me that you think from knowing my personality, from the conversation that we've had, a game that you can both recommend that I should play. So we'll start with you, Destiny. Mm. She's got her thinking cap on. She's going through the library. Because I don't library. know if you've probably already... I feel like you've probably already played these games if you, like... I'm yeah, well, sure. even, even even if you think I might have played me, just throw one at me. Um, I would say, like, one of my favorite games is um, Chrono Trigger. Have you played that? Chrono Trigger is probably one of the most underrated RPGs. Yes. And, and it's like... It's crazy that when people talk about the greatest RPGs, it's very like like hardcore RPG heads always speak about it. But you never see like when the big platforms like the IGNs, GameSpots, and all of that do like their lists of the greatest RPGs. And Chrono Trigger's never there, and I'm not sure why because it's such a it's such a it dope, was so well done, such a dope experience. And even better, the main pro tag just looks like Goku fam. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like, like, how can you have an RPG and the whole art style is Dragon Ball Z and no one got sued? I think Akira Toriyama actually worked on yeah, that game. Yeah, I think he if did. If I help. remember correctly, I think he actually did the art for them. Ah, uh, well, it would make sense because I'm just like, I'm like, fam, why is Vegeta and, and Goku in this <laughs> game? Seriously, <laughs> with a frog. Like, what's ca- like <laughs> from from you got a frog and someone who looks like Vegeta and Goku and it's an RPG and it's not one of the the, the lame ones that Bandai has dropped. That's mm. something alone for you to kind of get your teeth into. What is it about this game which is so special to you? Oh my God. So it was the second RPG that I played after Zelda. And it was just amazing because there was time travel, there was fantasy, there was like a lot of characters I connected to. I think one of my favorite characters from that is Luca. She was kind of like the scientist, kind of like nerdy girl kind of, like feel to it Mm -hmm. and it wasn't just like oh we're saving the princess or anything like that because that's what zelda was it was basically saving the princess but in chrono trigger the princess joins you and you guys go on this epic adventure together and i just loved it it's the reason why i played the next game i played which is uh illusions of gaia which is kind of gives the same feel i don't know if you've ever heard of that game have you so i haven't i haven't heard of that one that's one that i have to check out and just randomly why has link got pink hair like LinkedIn, I still can't. I still don't. Why is his hair looking like a candy floss? I know random. I think that's the only time it looks pink. Is in yeah, a link yeah, to yeah. The past, yeah. Link right? to the past is the only game where it is because that was my first um, Legend of Zelda game as well. Pink, random. All right, Matt, throw it at me. What game do you recommend for me? And you're not allowed to say Yakuza because that's too easy. Yeah, that's too easy. <laughs> um, so I know you love JRPGs. I know you love Persona. And I actually got into the series because after I finished Persona, I was like, I need something else. 
Uh, so I want to recommend The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. I don't know if you've ever heard the Legend of Heroes series. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so Trails of Cold Steel uh, is fantastic. It gets a lot of that uh, persona style, like hang out with your friends, spend time with people, while also being set uh, in almost like a Game of Thrones style, like political drama. Um, obviously, there's still high school. Obviously, there's still waifus. Obviously, there's still all this stuff. But like the story like takes place over like this entire continent. And like the characters are fantastic. And like the games just keep building on each other. Uh, and now like the fourth one's supposed to be coming out and that one's supposed to be the last one. Um, but definitely Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel. I know you're super into JRPGs and I think this one would be right up your alley. So it's crazy because I've heard so, um, like I've seen Cold Steel loads of times and I've seen people speak about it, but no one's ever kind of explained it to me in that way that it kind of hits that kind of persona-esque. Because I think the closest thing that's kind of had that that feel for me in that um, kind of medieval feel was Fire Emblem. Um, what was the late, what was the last Fire Emblem called? Uh, um, three Houses. Three Houses. Yeah, yeah, three, yeah I yeah. love Three Houses because Three Houses so gave that to me. I was able to have my my the, my black character for not the main pro tag, but I had to go to his house. Golden Dare and them man there. Car, obviously, <laughs> they was representing for the man them. Um, and yeah, like that's probably the cold, the closest. And I didn't actually realize that Cold Steel kind of followed that kind of trait. And the new one is looking amazing. Like the, the trailers I've seen is looking super, super dope. It's really good. And like the cliffhangers the games will leave you on. And like, there's also like mechs and stuff. Like there's so much that the game does while also giving you time to just run around and hang out with your friends. It's awesome. Like it's, it's really good. So uh, you've got an amazing podcast. Like I said, um, uh, Matt basically approached me online to jump on and I'm always about talking about games. So I said, yes. And then I went and listened and I went down a rabbit hole and I'm on about eight episodes now. Like, I think it's like such a great podcast. I love what you're doing. I want more people to listen to it. Now on their podcast, they love to throw people on the spot. Yeah, that is their <laughs> thing. So man's gonna have oh, to no. obviously throw them both on the <laughs> spot. So if you had to compare your podcast to an amazing video game character, who would that character be? All right. Okay. No big, no long explanation. Just say the character and give me a tagline. Why that character represents your podcast. Um, I don't mind who. I'm going to let Matt start this time because Matt's always throwing people under the bus. So let, let, let me get him straight away. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think our podcast to be described by a video game character. I feel like we're very... Uh, Nathan Drake from Uncharted. Uh, usually pretty dumb, but can get serious. And we like to cover stuff that we think is important and worth talking about and uncovering things together to, to talk about mental health, to talk about video games, to talk about things that people might be struggling with while also having a good time doing it. So I, I'd say Nathan Drake. It's, it's a good time, but we also know how to get serious. Love it. Destiny's face was like, Nathan Drake, what are you talking about, fam? Like, <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? No, she did not, I her face did not to... agree. But I love the answer. Coming in, Destiny, real quick. If your um, podcast was a video game character, who would it be? I was going to say Barrett from Final Fantasy. Okay. Because I feel like we're loud, we're exciting. And I think that's what you get when you first listen to our podcast. But then like there are moments where we're very deep, just like Barrett. Like you, when you get to know him, you find like out that he's a father and like he has very deep roots and beliefs. And I feel like that's what we bring to everybody who listens to us. We have some fun in the beginning, but like we really, our focus really is on mental health and gaming and just like how society sees us us and black lives matter like those things are important to us so I, we're was, fun but we also talk about real issues that was an actually dope answer like i i that was like you was prepared i i really <laughs> 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 make sure you check them both out thank you so much for coming on too many games i can speak to you all day but as you know we're a short form podcast um let your socials are going to be all over the thing anyway but where can the people find you 
Uh, if they wanted to check us out, you can catch our podcast on any one of those uh, spo- uh, podcast services. We're on Apple, we're on Spotify. You can find us at anchor.fm slash burnout brighter. Catch us on Facebook at the Burnout Brighter Podcast and at YouTube, just search up Burnout Brighter. We have a bunch of reviews, let's plays, and a bunch of more exciting stuff coming. So yeah. And on Twitter, um, I'm at burnout underscore Matt and Destiny. At DNBC. 32. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. I've been Mr. Midas. They've been the Burnout Bright Podcast. And we out. Peace. Peace.